Okay, in this part of our video, we're going to replace the trunk floor in this 1968 GTO. As you can see, the floor is pretty rusty, and it does have some holes in it. It probably could be repaired, but because this is going to be a Concours restoration, we just chose to replace the pan instead of trying to repair it. Now, underneath this floor pan, of course, there's braces that hold this floor pan in position. And you want to make sure that when you cut this pan, that you do not cut the floor braces that hold the pan in place. The floor braces also are there for the gas tank support, and that's where the gas tank bolts to the body. Now you can see, you can see I've drilled some holes, and of course that's where I'll use for the starting point and use my air operated hacksaw and that those holes are also in line with where the braces are underneath the car. So what I'll do is I'll put the, the saw and saw right down alongside the brace that's underneath the car and cut these panels out. Now I want to show you also the bracing underneath. You want to make sure that you do not cut the bracing that's under the car. Now that we're under the car, you can actually see the floor support that's under the body that runs down the full length of the trunk to the back of the car. Now this, this panel here is just a, a brace itself where the frame actually bolts the body to the car. You can see that's where the frame bolt would go. <clears throat> this brace here in the center is the gas tank brace. Actually there's two. And then the frame that runs down the other side where you bolt the frame in is there. Now when you cut this, you make sure you do not want to cut these braces. All right, now we're going to go back up to the top side of the car and we'll start cutting out the trunk floor. Now, using the holes that I cut in earlier with the drill, you can see there's one here, one here, one here, then up in the back, all the way across. Now, where these holes are, the braces run in the middle. And you can see the floor is indented here where the braces run. Now that indentation is actually the water runoff. If you get water in your trunk, the water would run down around follow these valleys in the pan and you could open the drain plugs and drain the plug, drain the water out of the trunk. But what I want to do now is take the, I have an air operated hacksaw and uh, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut down the edge of that brace. I can follow the design in the trunk floor to make my cut. cut the rest of this out so when we come back there'll be three sections of this trunk floor that will be already cut out. Now after we cut the trunk floor out then we want to remove this extra trunk panel that's attached to the braces. You don't want to have any of the old trunk floor in here at all. So when we come back I'll show you how to take the extra metal off of the top of the braces. Okay, now that we got the, trun uh, the trunk floor cut out, just, this is just a rough cut. You can still see that the braces, these are the braces in the middle, and then the braces are still here on the sides. Now, what you want to do next is lay your trunk pan in the trunk. Now that we've got the where the spare tire hole down in the jack piece was, 
out of there, the trunk pan will lay down in on the floor pretty tight. You can, it's tight right up against those braces. <clears throat> but we still want to take that other sheet metal that's on those braces off. Now what we're going to do now is scribe around this new floor pan so we can get a general idea in the, what's remaining of the, the old floor pan where we want to cut. Now you want to scribe just give you some kind of a guide cut it out all the way up to where we scribe it. But like I said, this is just to give you a general idea of where the pan is fitting on the original floor. that scribed in there. We'll take the floor pan back out. Get that out of the way here. All right, now I don't know if you can see very good in here, but there's a line that goes all the way around where that floor pan set. Now what we want to do is cut the floor out the rest of the way within, we want to stay about a half an inch below and to the side of that scribe line. Um, so we're going to go ahead and trim up along the back side here a little more and uh, get that cut out and when we come back then we'll, I'll show you how to remove this metal that's going to be left here on these braces. So we'll go ahead, like I said, we'll get the rest of this trimmed in, and then when we come back we'll uh, show you how to remove this metal on these braces. Okay, now we got it all trimmed, and as you can see I used a cutoff tool to get it, and you can, you can actually see there's our original scrape line and I, I used the cutoff tool and cut it down to about three quarters of an inch below the scrape line. Now that's where I'm going to leave that. I'm going to weld that piece now in there so there will be three quarters of an inch of the original metal underneath it. You can also see I took the cutoff tool and cut through the layer of the trunk floor we're going to take off and uh, didn't cut it all the way through so it went through the bracket itself but now that's broke loose from the bracket. I did the same thing on the back side also. Now I want to show you how to take the rest of the trunk pieces out. We need to take these four sections out before we put the trunk pan in and what I do is I take Normally what you would do is you would use a um, spot weld drill and drill through. Um, you can't see the spot welds on the top because the trunk's still rusted. Now you can see them from the underside, but I don't want a drill coming up because I want the underside of that pan, uh, the, the braces underneath to still look original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a grinder with a, a welding uh, grinder on there. That's not a, like a that's not a piece of 36 grinding disc. This is an actual uh, cutting wheel. So you can feel underneath where the spot welds is. And what you want to do is grind on top.
grind on top of the original spot weld. <laughs> You can just take the screwdriver and pop the spot weld out. So you want to do that on all of this so you can get this off. So when we put the trunk floor in, then it'll sit right back down on this that we originally did from the factory. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting all that out. And then uh, we're going to grind the area all around the trunk and uh, get ready to start. So we can put the new trunk floor in there and uh, when we come back then you'll be able to see with all these pieces gone and with it all being ground down. So we'll be back here in a couple of minutes and uh, we'll show you that. Okay now you can see that we've got <clears throat> all the metal trimmed off. We've got everything all ground down and it's ready to be welded. We took and we deburred everything so there's no burrs on anything here because you're going to be working underneath this after we put the pan in may put sealer on that uh, you don't definitely don't want to get a burr in your figure running it up underneath these pieces of steel so now we're going to set the trunk floor back in and you can see we ground the trunk floor too all the way around the edge ground it all down trimmed it around trimmed it around the edges trimmed it in the back here and what you want to do now once you get it in place you want to take and put a couple of pop rivets in it to hold it down so let's see here Where you want to put the pop rivets is in the area where it, you can't see them because you can, you're going to grind these pop rivet heads off and fill that hole in a little bit there. This is just to keep your panel held in place. Just to keep your panel held in place, keep it from moving around. Let's put one in over here on the other side. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pop rivet this panel all down, and we'll be back after it's done. Okay, now we got the trunk floor pop riveted down in. And uh, as you can see, I went ahead and I drilled holes approximately six inches apart where the trunk floor is going to be reattached to the under braces. And you want to start welding those in first before you do any welding on the sides because the trunk floor will shrink a little bit, that will pull. And uh, if you weld the sides first, it may pull the trunk lid or the trunk floor off of the braces, which will make it harder to weld. So you want to weld the bracing first before you weld the edges of the floor pan. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start welding this in with the MIG pretty simple process. I mean we're pretty much getting down to, to the end where we'll be filling the edges of the trunk lid and getting it ready to, to prime. So get the MIG welder hooked up here. And like I say you want to start welding the floor braces in first before you do the edge. Because if you were to weld the edge, it would pull the panel up and it would probably lift it off of the braces. So let's go ahead here and uh, go ahead and 
and get this welded down. Now after these are all welded down, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and we'll tack weld all the edges. Now I'm not going to weld this back in solid on the edges, that's not necessary. So if you just spot weld it and get your welds to where they're about an inch apart along all your edges, that'll be fine. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to finish welding this and then we'll be back to show you what to do after that. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, now you can see we've got it all welded in. And I did go ahead and I did weld the panel in solid. Um, it's probably better to weld it in solid, although it's not necessary. And you can see there where I welded in all the holes that we drilled. And everything is welded solid. Now, I went ahead and I ground all the welds. And then I DA'd around where the welds were and uh, I'm going to now fill this with Duraglass. The reason for the Duraglass is to smooth out our edges and fill our welded areas and to make the panel smooth again and blend into the rest of the trunk. So you won't be able to tell that we actually replaced this trunk panel from the inside. Now I show how to do this kind of fill work in our second video, the advanced auto body and complete uh, base coat clear coat painting video because we weld a lot of panels in uh, patch panels in on that truck that we did. So I'm going to start to fill this here. And then we'll cut out when we come back. This will already be DA'd. This will already be DA'd and be ready for primer. So, um, but like I say, we show you how to do a lot of the finish work in our other video. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead then and fill all this and fill our seams. And uh, we'll be back after it's going to be filled, we're going to go ahead and sand it out and then it'll be ready to prime. After we get this in primer, then we'll go underneath the car and seam seal the edges and fill the, uh, where we cut the panel in between the braces and then the underside will be done too, but I want to show you how to uh, uh, put the, the, uh, the fill in on the other beams. So. We'll go ahead, we'll do this, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Okay, and as you can see, this is the underside of the new trunk floor. We've already got it painted and everything, but all you have to do underneath here is on the edges where the seams were still shown there, you want to seam seal along that edge, and then in the front edge the same way where we join the new trunk floor with the old panel. All you do is run seam sealer on there. And all you got to do after that is just get the floor pan scuffed and you can either paint it like we did here. Most people uh, undercoat and paint these black. But the whole underside of this car, the 68 GTO as you can see, is all painted. Everything is painted. No undercoat on this car. Of course, this is going to be a number one show car, and it probably won't get driven on the road ever. So, like I say, though, if you're going to be driving yours, you can probably just undercoat it or paint it black. But all we did was where we welded this on, the, the cross braces onto the floor is just basically DA'd and smoothed it out because the gas tank will go in here and cover this. Now what we'll do is we'll show you the inside of the trunk floor as it's all finished. It's already been speckle painted. So check this out under here a little bit and we'll be back in a moment.
And here's the inside of the trunk. As you can see, it's already been speckle painted. Now, the speckle paint is a water-based paint. So what we do after we speckle paint the trunk is let that dry for about 24 hours. And then we uh, spray clear coat. We clear coat the trunk. And that way, uh, the water, if you ever get the trunk wet, which you never hope you get your trunk wet, but this way the clear coat will protect and won't let the water get in and eat the trunk paint off. Like I say, that is a water-based paint. But as you can see where we put the trunk together there, there's no seam. You can't tell where we did it. All the seams look original and factory. Even up in the front, you can't tell, and that's the idea. You don't want to be able to tell. All right, well, this will wrap up our tutorial on replacing the trunk floor, and we'll move on to something else, be it replace the fender bottoms or put on a quarter panel or put in new floor pans. We'll be back shortly.